Leaders from France and Germany are headed to Washington this week to meet with President Trump. One item that's high on their agenda, lobbying the president not to pull out of the Iran nuclear agreement. That Obama-era deal froze Iran's nuclear program in exchange for lifting sanctions. We spoke earlier to the foreign minister of Iran, Javad Zarif. You said that if the U.S. pulls out, the outcome will be unpleasant. What did you mean by that? It will lead to U.S. isolation in the international community. Everybody has advised uh, the administration that uh, this is not a bilateral agreement between Iran and the United States. And withdrawing from it uh, would be seen by the international community uh, as a, an indication that the United States is not a reliable partner. Iran has many options, and those options are not pleasant. If the U.S. pulls out of the nuclear deal, will Iran continue to abide by its terms? If the benefits of the deal for Iran uh, start to diminish, uh, then there is no reason for Iran to remain in the deal, because it's uh, not acceptable for us to have a one-sided agreement. If the U.S. and its allies come to their own agreement on the sidelines to address some of the things that President Trump is concerned about, Will you accept that? No, because uh, what is important is for uh, the Europeans to bring the United States into compliance, because Iran has been in compliance with the deal. As you've said, the president, in your view, is unpredictable and unreliable. Are you saying no power, North Korea or anyone else, will come to an agreement with America if they break this? Well, countries will make their own decisions. But obviously, this would be a very bad precedent that if the United States sends this message to the international community that the length or the duration of any agreement would depend on the duration of the presidency, uh, that would mean people will at least think twice before they start negotiating with the United States. But it sounds because like... Because negotiations in, uh, involve give and take, uh, and people will not be prepared to give if the take is only temporary. It sounds like you're saying it's, it's President Trump's move on this. You're going to see what he does on May 12th if he puts sanctions back on Iran, and then you'll decide what the consequences will be. No, we have uh, put a number of options for ourselves, and those options are ready, uh, including options that would involve uh, resuming at a much greater speed our uh, nuclear uh, activities. Uh, and those are all uh, envisaged uh, within the deal, and those options are ready to be implemented, and we will make the necessary decision uh, when we see fit. You're ready to restart your nuclear program if President Trump puts sanctions back on Iran, even if the rest of the world says don't do this? Obviously, the rest of the world cannot ask us to unilaterally and one-sidedly uh, implement a deal that has already been broken. President Trump offered to meet with your president, President Rouhani, at the United Nations, and Iran said no. Uh, he made a, a very negative and insulting speech before the General Assembly, and while he was making that speech, uh, they approached us. Uh, and we believe that the first requirement for uh, any bilateral meeting is mutual respect. And if the president is not prepared to provide that, exercise that mutual respect, then a meeting would not produce any positive results. CIA Director Mike Pompeo was a very harsh critic of this deal when he was in Congress. Uh, he is very close to the president. Now he's the nominee to become Secretary of State. Do you read his nomination as a sign this deal is done? Uh, well, uh, every indication that the United States is sending um, uh, appointments, statements, uh, indicate to us and the international community that the United States is not serious about its international obligations. Would you be able to work with him? Well, as I said, the requirement for any uh, international engagement is mutual respect. We will have to wait and see.
Pompeo has spoken in the past about striking Iran. John Bolton, the president's new national security advisor, uh, has said the goal should be regime change in your country. Do you think that as national security advisors, they're going to be honest brokers with the president presenting him with these diplomatic options? Uh, is that a diplomatic option? <laughs> Uh, I think that has been... Uh, well, that's what I'm saying, though. Are they... Does this... Their appointments make military confrontation more likely? Or do you still see the possibility to negotiate? Well, I, I think the United States has never abandoned uh, the idea of regime change in Iran. Under the existing deal, Iran has promised to stay more than one year away from a so-called breakout. Uh, that's a U.S. calculation. It's not any promise that we have made because we never wanted to produce a bomb, uh, and, and now Mr. Pompeo uh, uh, obviously has said that in his testimony in Congress, that Iran was never racing towards a bomb, and it will not be racing towards a bomb. It's a late admission, but better late than never. But to the point, though, if it is such a settled issue, why not make another pledge saying, sure, why should we? after the end of this deal, we still won't want why to build we? a, a why bomb? Why should we? There was, there was a negotiation. And there was an agreement that was reached after hours upon hours of negotiations. But you won't say we in cannot, the future we don't intend to build a bomb I mean, and we that, will that's, sign that's something saying that? That's very clear. It is in the, in, the, in the nuclear agreement. It's not clear Iran, to President Trump, though. This well, is one I mean, of the things he's uh, he, most concerned I mean, that's, about. Uh, that's, the sunset that's clause, three, specifically. three lines down the preface to the agreement. It says Iran commits itself never to develop a nuclear weapon. I mean, you don't, you don't need even to read the entire 150 pages of the, of the deal. Just read the first three lines, and it's there. There is no sunset to the fact that Iran will never seek nuclear weapons. And you can see the full interview with Iranian Foreign Minister Javad Zarif on our website at facethenation.com. We'll be right back.